Our next session is how to fly first class for almost free with Nicky Kelvin, head of the Points Guy UK. Join Nicky for his insights and tips on how to maximize your travel using points and miles, all while saving money. A self-proclaimed aviation geek who reaped the benefits of his sister's former BA cabin crew role, Nicky flew all over the world for next to nothing. It was during this time that Nicky discovered the world of air miles and points and began to explore how he could maintain his globetrotting lifestyle to various countries around the world. If you'd like to ask Nicky a question, just post it in the live chat box and he will answer as many as he can during the session. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this virtual session of how to fly first class for almost free. Um, I'm Nicky. Thank you for the intro. Um, I was at the Destination Show just over a year ago in February last year with a big crowd of people and actually watching that Columbia footage and generally that in combination with the travel announcement yesterday, I'm really itching to get back out there and travel. And I wish we were all to, I wish we were all together in person. I'm sure those days will return. But for now, this feels like a brilliant time for us to talk about planning miles and points and for me to explain to you how you can fly first class for almost free. Um, and so in this talk, I want to give you an intro of who the points guy are, what we do, how we help people, a little bit of an intro on me. And then we're going to get into how all the tactics that you need to be able to fly first class for almost free. So we're going to look at some pandemic planning. That's maybe a little bit outside of miles and points, but how we can plan to build our miles and points, but also how to build trips looking to the future. We're going to take a look at credit cards and how that might fit into a strategy, the different loyalty programs, um, we're going to have a look at supermarkets because that's an amazing place you can earn miles and points and get free flights from. We're going to look at shopping portals, my favorite way of earning miles and points that so many people have never even heard of. Uh, we're going to look at how to find great deals. We're going to take a look at uh, airline or hotel status and what that could mean for you. And then about setting goals, uh, finding some kind of exciting things that you might want to look forward to. And I think now more than ever is a time when you might want to be thinking about something big and exciting, that real bucket list trip. And so I want to talk about how we can strategize to get there in style uh, in the coming months or years. I want to really encourage anybody watching to ask questions as we go along with this. I um, usually, if we were in person, I would be telling you, stick your hand up, shout at me, interject. Uh, I, I like to be interrupted and to explain stuff. I don't want to go too fast or too slow. So please do throw your questions into the, into the chat and um, they're going to be fed through to me. And so I can answer them as we go along, but then we'll definitely do a full Q&A at the end if there are any questions. So um, without further ado, I'm going to work out and find my little clicker and move on. So, okay, a little bit about me. This is me under a very big and sexy British Airways 747, um, crying at the sight of this because British Airways, if you are into aviation, you'll know they just retired all of their 747s and 747s are disappearing from the world. Um, but my background, actually, I'm a, I was a music lawyer. I was a lawyer in the city before that. But alongside that, I ran a blog and vlog called The Miles Mogul, talking about miles and points, credit cards, and all the kind of stuff we're going to talk about today. Um, I'm also a photographer, love shooting airplanes, and aviation and airplanes was, was always my obsession. Um, and as was shared in the intro, my sister was cabin crew, and I had the chance of flying around the world for incredibly cheap, always flying business class um, as, a, as a lucky little 18, 19, 20-year-old. And that got ripped away from me when my sister pretty much ruined my life by getting married and having kids uh, and taking me off her concessions and putting other people um, on her concession and putting her family on her concessions, her, her immediate family. And so I found miles and points as a way to continue to travel in luxury. Um, and so that brought me to The Points Guy. The Points Guy is a, um, a website that's 10 years old in the US. And about four or five years ago, we decided we needed to bring it to the UK and to bring this miles and points knowledge um, to, to the UK. It was the second biggest market for us. We had loads of readers that were based here. And there's loads of things we can do in the UK, not quite as, um, as great as what the Americans have. Their loyalty programs are much more developed, but there's still lots you can do over here. And so two years ago, we launched The Points Guy UK and grew a team of people and we're here to help people maximize their travel and understand how they can make most of miles and points. Um, and so, and so here we are, Points Guy UK. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go into the bulk of the um, 
of the presentation now and start to explain to you how you can get involved in the Miles and Points game, um, or indeed if you're already involved, then maybe how you can um, improve your game to, to get even more out of uh, Miles and Points. So a little note on pandemic planning. There's two sides to this. Now, the first side is forward planning. So now really is, and the past year has been the perfect time to start building up your miles and points. Um, you can earn plenty of miles and points even sat at home, which is one of the things we're going to get into. Uh, and I think, I think the key thing to note here is even if you haven't been doing that over the past year or over the past 10 years, it's never too late to start. So all the stuff I'm going to talk about today, take those first steps, start to earn points. Don't leave this, these points on the table. Points and miles are a currency that you can use to buy flights and hotels and other things. And being able to understand them and use them and earn them when it's not going to cost you anything to do that is really, really important. Uh, so do that now and plan ahead for, uh, for after the pandemic when you're going to be able to start traveling again. So... Um, thinking about planning actual travel, now this is a really tough one. The great thing about miles and points is often those tickets are flexible when you buy them, when you buy flights for miles and points. And so for, for, for pandemic planning, it's actually really good. If I've booked a flight with miles and points, let's say to Israel in July, and Israel we know is on the green list and so is a good destination for, for British travelers to go to. But let's say Israel don't open the borders yet and I can't get in. I actually don't need to worry about whether I can get a refund or change my flight. The, um, the ticket I'm gonna have for a small fee, I'm able to change it to a later date or cancel it. So, so Miles and Points provides a flexibility uh, to, that is very important when it comes to planning holidays for the pandemic. That's not really the, the core of what I'm going to talk about today, although uh, at the point of guy, we have lots and lots of information about how to plan pandemic trips and lots more coming in the next week as travel starts to open up again. Um, but now we're going to get into the, into the real core of how you can earn, collect, spend, understanding all of these things. The first thing I'm going to talk about is credit cards. And um, there's a really, really important caveat with credit cards, and that is these are not for everybody. Um, we say that you should only use credit cards if you're able to pay off the bill in full on time every month. These are not cards to carry balances on. But the idea is that if you're just using a debit card on your day-to-day -day spending and you can switch it to a credit card, you could be earning rewards on every single purchase you make everywhere. And there are some really brilliant cards out there with some really brilliant benefits and different cards apply to different people. I'm going to talk about a few of the really um, common ones in the UK, ones that people uh, often talk about and just and just give some top line stats about them and, and what, what you might be able to get from them. So um, a great beginner's card is the American Express Gold card. Um, it's It earns membership reward points. That is American Express's loyalty currency. And so for every purchase you make, every pound you spend, they'll give you a membership reward point. The brilliant thing about membership reward points is that you can transfer them to loads of different airline programs and hotel programs. So you can spend them in loads of different ways. We're going to come on to talk about different loyalty programs soon, but, but these flexible points are great. When you take out that card, if you spend three grand in three months, you'll get 20,000 points as a sign up bonus, which is a big chunk. Just to give you a little bit of context at this stage, in case you really don't know what 20,000 points means, a one-way European flight with British Airways, which is one of the transfer partners of American Express, is 4,000 points. So 20,000 points is getting you at least, or well, it can get you as, ma as many as five one-way European flights for free. You just have to pay the taxes on top, which actually, in that case, are capped at £17.50. So... Um, so that's a brilliant card. Comes with some benefits, like you get some lounge access every year, you get purchase protections, a few other things. But earning points on every single purchase is, is, the, is at the core of that card and earning a really flexible currency. Another one that a lot of people talk about is the British Airways American Express cards. Now, there are two of these. One is free and one is paid for. Um, the, the paid for one, it costs um, almost £200 a year as an annual fee. The free one obviously is free, uh, but they're very different in that the paid one, the premium card, you'll earn a 25,000 Avios sign up bonus um, when you take the card out if you spend three grand in three months. 25,000 Avios, again, that's going to get you 
a lot of a lot of free European flights, but that's also going to get you sort of half of a business class ticket to New York. You're going to earn one and a half Avios per pound um, for your ongoing spending. And the really great thing about this card is the companion voucher. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail about the companion voucher. You may have heard of this. You may have earned them in the past, uh, but. The companion voucher is something that you earn after spending £10,000 in a year on this card. It's what we say is the most valuable credit card benefit of any UK um, of any UK benefit. And essentially what it does is you buy one ticket with your Avios, with your British Airways Air Miles, and you get another one for free when you use the voucher. So it's a really brilliant benefit. So you almost double the value of your bank of points. The Amex Platinum card. Now, this is a this is a step up from the other ones. It's more expensive. It's almost six hundred pounds a year. So this one is not for everybody. But you're earning membership reward points on this one too. It's a thirty thousand point sign up bonus, which is a lot. And and the the exciting thing about this card is there's many benefits that come along with it. Travel insurance for your whole family. Very comprehensive travel insurance. You get priority pass, so lounge access for for you and uh, your supplementary card holder and and a guest each. Um, you get things like credits every month for um, Addison Lee. You get hotel status with different hotel groups. The list of benefits goes on and on and on. And if you're a regular traveller uh, and if you're a family, you know you might be paying hundreds of pounds for travel insurance and for lounge access and all these things you can actually extract a lot of value out of this card. So that's one to think about if you're a heavier traveler. And then one more just to note, because lots and lots of people say, oh, you can never use an Amex card. And, and really all the ones I've talked about so far are American Express. Now that's not quite true. You can use Amex in a lot of places online, pretty much everywhere you can. But Virgin Atlantic have some brilliant cards. Um, they have a free and a paid for MasterCard. So you can definitely use that anywhere. Really good earning rates. Currently 15,000 point sign up bonus with no minimum spend on the, on the premium card. Um, and so that's a really interesting one if you want to have a MasterCard or, you, or you're spending a lot of money in places that don't take American Express. One other thing in the card world that I'll note um, is products like Curve. Um, where you're able to put your cards, all of your cards behind another card. So I use my Curve card when I go abroad. I don't pay foreign transaction fees, but it's charging it to my Virgin MasterCard. And so I'm earning points even when I go abroad. I'm going to leave this there. I think I'm throwing a lot of numbers and information on the credit cards. Um, and I appreciate it's a complicated business if you haven't been it. But um, like I say, on the points uk, we break all of this down in a very simple way. So you can see it all there. But, but the key message is here. If you think you are able to get a credit card and you can be in control of your spending and pay it off every month, get one and put all of your purchases through on the card so you can be earning points on every single purchase. I'm going to move on to talk about loyalty programs now. So um, loyalty programs are the programs that um, companies like British Airways or Virgin or Marriott or Singapore Airlines have to reward customers for their loyalty, and they all have their own currency. And this is quite a simple one. The task of taking out a credit card and picking the right one could be a little bit complicated, but with the right advice and information, you can find one and just get going. But with the loyalty programs, you just need to sign up for them. It's completely free. For example, British Airways, you go on BA.com, you can sign up to the Executive Club, that's their loyalty program. And every time that you're flying with an airline or, or staying in a hotel, just make sure that you're giving your loyalty program number and that you're earning points for those flights or hotels. Now I understand today, not many people are flying around or staying in hotels, but when you are doing that, it, you should always be collecting the points. Don't leave these on the table. This is the most disappointing because especially people who travel for business and someone else is paying for their travel. It's an incredibly lucrative way of making lots and lots of points that you're not even paying for. It doesn't cost anybody anything. Nobody else can earn them. Your employer can't earn them. Only you can. It's got to be your bum in the seat on the plane. Um, but also you need to set up these loyalty programs so that all the other things we're talking about, so the credit cards and when we talk about the supermarkets later and the shopping portals, you want all of your miles and points to be feeding into these loyalty programs. So just set them up. It's free, have them sitting there. I use a great tool called Award Wallet. And in Award Wallet, I've loaded up all of my different cards, really easy, simple, cool. And I can see all my balances. I can see when my points expire. Um, I keep a note of all my passwords and things like that. So I can see all of mine in one place. I mean, I have an outrageous amount of uh, different ones, um, but 
I, that's where I need a place to keep control. But many people in the UK might just end up, you know, with a BA and a Virgin account. If I was going to tell you to set up any BA and Virgin, probably the two that you want to have if you're based in the UK. So just a reminder, please, if you have questions or you want to stop me, do feel free to um, do feel free to fire questions in and I can stop and answer questions about any of the stuff that I'm talking about as I as I go along. So I'm going to move on to supermarkets now. This is so easy. So you can earn Avios, Virgin Points, other currencies from your day-to-day -day supermarket shopping. And there are two key ways with this. So first of all, I'm going to talk, I'm going to talk about three supermarket chains. Tesco, Sainsbury's, got fun things to say about that. Morrison's, not that exciting, but also do have something to say. So Tesco. You used to be able to convert your Tesco club card points into Virgin points and into Avios. You can no longer do that. Avios has been removed as a partner, but we'll come on to what that means in a moment. But Virgin Atlantic is the main partner of Tesco now. So for every £2.50 of club card points you earn, so that's from spending £250, you pretty much get one point per pound. You can convert that into 625 Virgin points. Now I'm going to use an extreme example here. Let's say you and your whole family on all of your shopping at Tesco, food, fuel, whatever, you're spending 250 quid a week. I know that's probably quite a lot, but I'm going to use that as an example and you can scale up and down from that point. If you were spending 250 quid a week at Tesco, that would equate to 30,000 Virgin points every year. To put that into context, you can fly to Israel with Virgin Atlantic, for example, at 9,000 points one way. So even your Tesco shop at that level is earning you three flights to Israel. So it's real, real benefit, real bonus. The £2.50 in club card points, you could, of course, use that as £2.50 on your shopping. At the points guy, we value miles and points. So you're able to have a look at, right, I've got 625 Virgin points. I don't really understand what that means in normal money. Well, we've, uh, we value most points at, at least over a penny, 1.1, 1.2p. So actually your 625 Virgin points is worth about seven quid. So you can use it for seven pounds worth of flights, or you can use it for £2.50 in Tesco. I, I know what I would rather be doing. Ultimately, the nice thing about these points is they've got that floor value of the actual points. So if you're not able to use them or you don't want to use them on flights, you can always just not convert them over to Virgin. You just spend them on your weekly shop. Disappointing for me, though. That hurts, hurts me inside a little bit. Let's move on to Sainsbury's. So new partnership was announced earlier in the year between the Nectar program and Avios, which is very exciting and you can now convert Nectar into Avios. And importantly, you can now convert Avios into Nectar. And I'll talk about why that's a really innovative and different thing. So 400 Nectar points converts into 250 Avios. Something to note about this scheme. So whereas with Tesco, it's very obvious, one point equals one point, and you convert them at quite beneficial rate. The Sainsbury's rate the Nectar to Avios rate is less beneficial. However, this is what you need to know. Make sure you download the Nectar app because whilst you don't earn as many points through Nectar and it doesn't convert to as many Avios, Nectar offers loads of really great um, bonus offers. And so when I open my Sainsbury's app, it showed my Nectar app, it, will set, it actually allows me to earn extra points on the things I commonly buy. So when I look in my app, it shows me things like peppers, avocados, butter, milk, the, the, the things that are on my shopping list anyway. And I'm earning an extra 60 points here, 80 points there, 125 points here. So those, all of those extra points rack up very quickly alongside the, the one point per pound that you're earning. Um, and so racking all of those up and being able to convert them into Avios at the end of the year will leave you in a similar position to the Tesco example that I just used before, where you're going to get real flights out of just your Sainsbury shopping. Now, why, it's really, why is it really interesting that you can convert your Avios back into Nectar? It's amazing because if you're earning points from all of these other things, from flying on British Airways or from the shopping portals or from credit cards, and you, don't, and you can't use your Avios for flights for whatever reason, you always know that you're going to be able to convert your Avios back into Nectar and just spend it in Sainsbury's. So it's got a really great floor value there. So 250 Avios, you send it back to Nectar, 
400 nectar points, it's worth two quid to spend in Sainsbury's. Now, it's not the most impressive um, value. It, it, it sits below what we value Avios at, but it's really comforting to know that if I've got, let's say, 5,000 Avios sitting in my, um, sitting in my uh, British Airways account that I don't think I'm going to use, I'm like, do you know what? I'm going to send it over to Nectar and I'm going to, I'm going to go to Sainsbury's and without, I can't do the maths quick enough in my head, but it's about, you know, 25 quid to go spend in Sainsbury's, which is brilliant. Um, you know, you can, you know, you can always use it, which takes away that sort of like, I'm never going to be able to use my points. Okay. Last quick point, Morrison's. Um, so Virgin has a partnership with Morrison's. Sometimes it's incredibly lucrative. So recently Morrison's were paying eight Virgin points per pound for shopping in Morrison's. This one works a little bit differently. It's not a loyalty program. What Virgin does is on their website, um, you have to register your credit cards or your debit cards. And when you shop in Morrison's, it tracks in the background and they just pay the Virgin points for your spending in Morrison's and other retailers. I'm going to talk more in a second when we come onto shopping portals, uh, because there are two, the shopping portals work in two ways. There's online spending and there's in-store spending. But in Morrison's, the in-store spending way that the shopping portals work is how you can earn Virgin points in Morrison's. I just looked in my account right now, a little disappointed to find out that the Morrison's offer is not currently running, but they, it does pop up and disappear, pop up and disappear. For a long time, you could actually do that at um, Waitrose too. So you were earning Virgin points at Waitrose, which is great, but that's unfortunately gone as well. But this is the kind of thing you need to keep your eye on. Shopping portals. Okay, this is one where if you take anything away from this talk, please just go and do this because it is such a no brainer. I know that everybody watching this will be able to benefit from this and it's so easy and you will earn more points than any of the other stuff I've talked about so far. What are shopping portals? So the airlines have, um, if you, you may have heard of top cashback, Quidco, cashback sites like that, they are, um, it's similar to how they work. So on a cashback site, you find your retailer, you click through to the retailer and you can earn cashback. With the shopping portals, airlines like British Airways, they have um, the Avios e-store, Virgin has, um, their, their shopping portal is called Shops Away. So you log into these shopping portals, you just have to have a Virgin or a BA account, which we talked about earlier, free to set up. You look on the shopping portal and it'll show you an earning rate for almost every online retailer. You'll really struggle to find a common retailer on there that, that you buy stuff out that isn't on these portals. So I just had a look at the BA one five minutes before we started this talk. And I'm always surprised by the earning rates. ASOS, six Avios per pound. Apple, three Avios per pound. Nike, Nike, four Avios per pound. Harvey Nichols, 14 Avios per pound. Um, you often get like flower delivery places that do 25 or 30 Avios per pound. So to put that into context, let's take Apple, the next laptop you're going to buy. Let's say, you know, you might buy a new computer every three or three or four years. And you spend 2000 pounds on it and you're going to earn three out three Avios per pound on that 2000 pounds. That's 6000 Avios. You're earning a flight to Europe for free for buying your laptop. That's just one purchase. Now, Apply this across everything you're buying, what you're buying on ASOS and Nike. There's even retailers like Just Eat on there. Um, so there's outrageous amount of options. If you're buying flowers, you know, you spend 40 quid on your, on your husband or wife or whatever as a gift and you're earning 20, 30 Avios. So even on a purchase as little as 30 or 40 quid, you could be earning hundreds and hundreds of points. Add that up over a year across a whole family, across all of your online purchasing, it racks up to outrageous amounts. One really interesting one that I just want to add is that there are some hotel programs on there. So you can actually earn a lot through programs like, um, through websites like hotels.com or booking.com. I don't like those sites. I like to book directly with hotels usually because that means I earn the loyalty points of that hotel group and my status gets recognized. But one thing I've really got into, I'm a big Marriott Bonvoy fan. Um, I, ha I have titanium status with them. But through the British Airways portal, you can earn five Avios per pound for Marriott Bonvoy bookings. Now, I click through to the Marriott site from the BA shopping portal. I'm earning five Avios per pound in the background on the hotel, on the hotel booking. But then I make my booking with Marriott. So I'm earning 10 Bonvoy points per dollar 
on my hotel booking, plus I'm paying on my Bonvoy credit card, so I'm earning on the credit card too. So I'm triple earning across these kind of bookings. So if you want to get really smart about this, think about how you can stack these earning opportunities. A very simple one is, of course, buy stuff through the shopping portal and use a rewards credit card to then pay for it, and you'll earn in both places at the same time. So you can easily see how this can rack up, um, how the points can rack up really quickly. Um, okay, I've just looked in the chat and there are some, there are quite a few, but I'm just gonna have a quick read of the questions before I move on. Maybe some of these will save until the end. Um, okay. Cool. I'm going to take some of these now because they are because they're relevant to the stuff we've talked about, and then we're going to come on to talk about deals, status, and goals afterwards. So, um, a question from Vicky Jackson. I think yes. In my experience, trying to book flights on points has a lot of restrictions, blackout dates, lack of flexibility, including no refunds. Whereas you said in your opening remarks that booking a points holiday means that you can change the details, particularly during these uncertain times. Please, can you clarify this? So, um, so the first point is you're saying booking flights on points has a lot of restrictions, blackout dates and lack of flexibility, including no refunds. That's definitely not the case. Almost all, if we're going to talk about Virgin and British Airways uh, programs, and this applies to most programs, you can change and cancel your tickets freely. Um, so, if I take the example of British Airways, in normal times, you will pay £35 for a change or £35 to cancel, which is pretty reasonable, I think. Let's say you, you know, you've booked four flights for a family, um, 35 quid a ticket to cancel the whole thing if you need to or change the whole thing is, is not too terrible. Of course, they also all have um, pandemic policies. And so actually, there's even more flexibility now and you're able to, in some circumstances, make changes or get vouchers uh, without paying. So for example, with British Airways, if you cancelled a points booking and took a voucher for it, you wouldn't have to pay anything. But if you want to take your cash and your points back, they'll charge you the 35 quid. But it's, it's a pretty fair, it's a pretty fair trade-off. In terms of blackout dates and restrictions, now this is that that is an important point. So of course you can only book these flights where they're available. Two key tips for this. So one thing is with British Airways, they release flights 355 days before uh, the flight leaves. I would recommend if you were if you want to fly on a really popular route, you should be at there at midnight on the phone or online to book your flights 355 days out. British Airways releases two business class seats and four economy seats on every single flight. It's often more than that, but that's the absolute minimum that they ever release. So um, so that's a way to ensure you can get uh, the booking that you want. But, but one thing that's one thing that I absolutely love is a website called SeatSpy. And SeatSpy allows you to search British Airways, Virgin, Air France, KLM, United, a few other airlines. And you can see in one huge chart every the whole year of every class on a route um, and it will show you all the availability very, very simply. I would really recommend Seats by. We have an article on, on uh, the points guy who uh, explains how to best use it. Um, also, sites like Expert Flyer, you're able to set up alerts. So you can say, right, I'm, I want to go from London to Los Angeles in business class between these dates. I can't find any availability. You set up an alert, and when those seats become available, those award seats become available, you'll immediately get an email, and so you can hop on and hop on and book. So I hope that answers. Hope that answers that question. Um, so Lloyd's Bank is stopping the Avios Mastercard. Is there another Mastercard which gives Avios? Shame to lose that product. I can't say a lot to answer that question. All I can say is watch our advice very closely because there is something exciting in that regard coming soon. Um. That was from Sally Moore. Again, okay, a question from Michelle Hutton. I want to book an ANA flight through Virgin Atlantic to Japan. How do I view award availability for the year? And is it available just to Tokyo or Osaka? Or is it available just to Tokyo? Or is Osaka a possibility too? Okay, great question. Um, and I'm going to save that question for when we do goals. So I'm going to add that to my list to talk about ANA Virgin redemptions. One really important thing to note is that 
you can use your points, your Virgin points, for example, you can use them on KLM, Air France, ANA, so, uh, various other partner airlines. So I'm going to come on to talk about how you could do some really exciting stuff and extract really good value. Um, okay, I'm just going to read this out loud and hope I can uh, hope I can answer it. Michael Gota says, has anyone calculated the end financial benefit if one compares the cashback that Amex pays at 1.25% versus the miles and points that one could get if one opted for this option? I, like other comments, have found particularly that Avios is quite restrictive. On one occasion in flying to America, we ended up using our Avios to fly business with Iberia via Madrid rather than with BA and not being granted the opportunity to use my Avios points. Well, um, we value points at the points, guys. So you can look on our valuation page. You can see what we value every point, every uh, program at. And so it's easy to know that, for example, on the BA premium card, you earn 1.5 Avios per pound. We value an Avios at 1.1p. So you're earning 1.6 or 1.7 pence per pound spent on that card. Um, and so, and so that beats the amount that you might earn on a cashback card. In terms of um, restrictive, I think seat spy is an option and the booking ahead is ways to combat and find availability. Uh, and in terms of Iberia, Iberia is a partner and sister airline of British Airways and you can use your Avios on Iberia. It's actually a great way to use your Avios because you pay less taxes when you fly Iberia. One recommendation there is you should set up an Iberia Plus account, transfer your points into Iberia and you'll pay even less tax. You can transfer your points freely between Iberia Avios and British Airways Avios, they share the currency, but they have different programs. Aer Lingus is in the same bucket. They also have a separate program, uh, Air Club, but they use Avios as their currency and you can transfer miles between all three freely. Okay. Um, so... Doo -doo 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 -doo. Just going through some of these, um, some more of these. Okay, easy question. Can Boots points be used for Avios? No, but I would also say whenever you're shopping anywhere, if you're going to go shopping at Boots, make sure you collect the points. Don't miss out. Don't miss out. But I'm sure Boots will be on the shopping portal. So if you're using Boots online, you'll be able to earn points that way. Um, Tatiana Jones says, sometimes the points value is higher than the cash ticket price. Is there any way around this? Well, I always say, check how much value you're getting for your points when you're using them. And if you're not getting good value, and if the cash price is less than that, and you've got the cash to spend, I would often buy the cash ticket. Remember, when you buy the cash ticket, you also earn even more points. So you've got to consider that as well. Um, and Elizabeth Pillar says, should you stick to one airline loyalty program or hedge your bets and go with both? I like diversity. So I like to have loads of different options. I like to be able to earn different through different programs. One of the brilliant things about the American Express membership rewards program is that you can wait until you know what you're going to use your points for and then transfer your points to that program. So that's so diversity is very beneficial. Lots of your questions here are about not being able to use your points, but by by knowing that you can have by knowing you have access to lots of different programs and within those programs, lots of different options. So with British Airways, don't just think BA, you can also fly Iberia, Hellingus, Alaskan, American Airlines, Qatar, Qantas, Finnair, the list goes on, all of the One World Airlines. Um, having more diversity with programs means you're going to have a wealth of different airlines you can access. Um, Okay, I'm, there's loads more questions, but right now I'm just going to leave it there and just finish up because we don't have loads of time left. Uh, but I am going to, I'm just making a note of another question that I really want to answer at the end. Okay, so moving on to deals. I'll keep this one short. So, um, three things that I would recommend for finding deals use the points guy, use Flyer Talk. Flyer Talk is a little bit of a complicated website to get involved in. I'm a little bit obsessed, but I'm a bit of a geek with all this stuff. But Flyer Talk is a forum where lots of um, amazing deals are shared, often before they're ever published on the blogs. Uh, so I would, if you wanted to really get into it, I would check out Flyer Talk. For example, there's a premium fare deal uh, thread on Flyer Talk where people post all the best, amazing um, business and first class deals. And some of those are crazy, like... 
I have booked, um, you know, flights. I, I booked a return business class flight to Hawaii. I've had to move it again and again and again and again. Unfortunately, I now have it booked for December. I'm hoping I'm going to be able to go. Uh, I found that in that forum and it cost me about 500 pounds for a return business class flight. Uh, it's actually from Budapest to Hawaii. It's going to earn me tens of thousands of Virgin points. It's going to reinstate my Virgin Gold status. We're going to talk about status in a second. So Flight Talk can be an interesting one. Otherwise, blogs like ours are ones that dive into those places and translate it into what normal humans can understand, not weird aviation geeks like me. Um, so finally, Google Flights, that is my favorite search engine for looking at flights. I am one thing I would recommend. It's really difficult in the current world to do this because we don't know how restrictions are going to be transiting through airports is really risky because uh, of different regulations. You could end up getting stung because even transiting through somewhere can mean you're subject to um, elevated quarantine restrictions. So this is definitely not one for today, this is one for when the world is back to normal. But on Google Flights, you can very easily search lots of different departure points and arrival points. And the best way to use this for finding really cheap deals is to search multiple departure points in close by European airports. So let's say you want to fly to Bangkok because you're going to Thailand. A London to Bangkok flight direct on British Airways and business class might be really, really expensive. But if you search departure points of Dublin, Amsterdam, Copenhagen, Paris, Gothenburg, let's say I'm just using some close by European examples, you might find that that four, five, six thousand pound business class ticket, you might find tickets for 1200 quid or 1500 quid that depart from Stockholm or Copenhagen or Dublin. And finding those deals means suddenly business class flights for cash might become affordable for you. You can earn lots of miles and points uh, by taking those flights and people use these tickets as ways to generate lots of points, but that's getting more sort of involved in the game. Um, but if you're a family, especially if you're buying four tickets, most people can't afford to spend by four tickets at five grand each. But on a big splash, you might be able to afford four tickets at 1200 quid each. If actually the economy equivalent out of London or Manchester or whatever might be costing you seven, eight, nine hundred pounds anyway, for another few hundred pounds, you could be flying business class. And maybe it'd be on a great airline like Qatar, uh, which is an airline that often has deals out of these European airports. And um, so I would definitely recommend that. Okay, so next up um status so you might want to consider getting status with the airlines um i'm not going to dwell too much on this because now again is not a time when people could be running around flying mm -hmm. just with the purpose of getting status the only way really to get status with hotels or airlines is to be bum in seat on the flight um or staying in the bed in the hotel you can't generally earn the points that you need to attain status through anything else, through credit cards or through online shopping. <clears throat> you have to be um, on the plane or in the hotel. But some of the airlines, for example, British Airways, have reduced the thresholds for earning status. So <clears throat> to attain silver membership with British Airways now, you need 450 tier points. And to get gold, 1,125 tier points, it's down 25% of what you needed to get before. What does that mean? So a return, um, if you got a return business class flight to somewhere like, let's say Malta or Athens, where you can find return business class flights on BA for, for often as little as, um, um, well, less than 200 pounds sometimes. Only two or three of those flights could get you silver membership. What does silver membership get you? Well, that gets you lounge access, business class check-in, priority security, free seat selection, lots of different uh, extra baggage, lots of different things that especially again for a family can be incredibly valuable, almost to the point where it's worth taking a couple of cheeky flights just to attain that status. But that's something you need to work out whether it makes sense for you. But again, it's another one, don't leave these points on the table. If you are flying or you are staying in hotels, just earn the nights, earn the points. 
And then finally, setting goals. So this is my last slide. So if you do have any questions, please do throw them into the chat now um, so I can tackle them in the few minutes that we have left at the end. So setting goals, I would recommend, there's two ways that I love to use my points. I love to use them to get mad value out of uh, short European flights. So there's nothing more satisfying than we buying a flight for 4,000 Avios and 17 pound 50 to let's say Geneva, when I need to go there and the cash price is like 500 quid. Those short European flights with cap taxes on British Airways are brilliant. But the way that I really love to use my points is to buy things that I just could never otherwise afford. So I'm talking first class to New York. And so I would recommend just getting, setting a goal and working towards it. So for example, British Airways, first class to New York, 68,000 Avios, it's 50,000 Avios in business. That is an attainable target and goal if you are earning from credit cards, from shopping portals, um, and, um, and doing all of these methods from the supermarkets and everything else to earn the points. It might take some people three months. It might take some people a year. It might take some people two years to get there. Throw in a companion voucher and you get two tickets. These things are within reach if you just do this stuff. But like I say, it might just take some of you a little bit longer if you have, uh, if you don't have, um, if, if you don't spend as much, but it's possible and you will get there. Um, so set your goals, be clear about those and, and just strive towards them, right? Two things. So someone asked me about ANA redemptions on Virgin. ANA is a Japanese airline with one of the best first and business class products in the world. You can use your Virgin points uh, to fly on um, ANA and at incredibly lucrative rates. I would recommend you having a look on our website. I published a post on how to search availability. I use united.com. United is Star Alliance, partner with ANA. You can very easily search um, lots of different dates in a month of view. So you can see all the availability month by month. Um, I booked a ticket from um, Tokyo to London. They also have their new first class product to Frankfurt or New York. So London or Frankfurt is good airports between there and Tokyo if you want to book their brand new amazing business or first class. Um, and the ticket was, for, I think, £14,000 to buy for cash. Uh, and I think I paid less than 20 quid plus Virgin points. It's absolutely pretty outrageous. Um, so yeah, use united.com, check the, my post on the website. That'll explain exactly how to do it. Then, um, so one, one more question. Someone said, what's the most valuable flight you've managed to get with your points? Now there's something called a multi-carrier award with, with uh, British Airways. I used about 200,000 points a few years ago and about 400 pounds in tax to book a flight that went all around the world um, on Qantas, on British Airways, and on Cathay Pacific, including Cathay First, um, all the way to Hong Kong, over to Taipei, back again, down to Perth, to Singapore, to London. The, the total ticket cost was £20,000, and my cash outlay was less than £500. It did cost me 200000 Avios. took me a long time to earn those, but I had the most incredible experience on uh, all of these different products. Um, uh, there's a very easy question that's just flown in. What's the best way to collect BA tier points when you don't get tier points with Avios purchases? That's from William Hartley. The only way to earn tier points is by flying with British Airways or with other One World Airlines and by putting your executive club number on your booking. I'm afraid that's the only way. Okay, I'm running out of time. I'll have to leave the other questions here, but feel free to get in touch with me with uh, any other questions you have. I hope you found this helpful uh, and useful. A reminder of our website, thepointsguide.co.uk. We have a daily newsletter. I write it every single day with all our, our top tips and news. So I would definitely recommend heading to, the, to our website, sign up to our newsletter, and you'll get the information every day. You can find The Points Guide UK on all the major um, social channels if you're bored and you want to watch some cool videos. Our YouTube channels have 35 million views now. We do these four cabin reviews where we sit in every class on the same plane to review airplanes. And if you want to find me, um, I'm at Nikki Kelvin on Instagram or Nikki at The Points Guide com if you want to shoot me an email um thank you destination so much for having me it's been a pleasure to be back with you um, and i hope lots of you get in touch with me if you have any more questions i really hope you've learned something today um, but start earning your points and miles now uh, and let's hope we can get back in the sky soon